right, Vesha Tuesday is now live on now. Welcome back to the show and thank you for keeping it here with us. Let me give a shout out to a few people before we get into this section. It's the newspaper review time and if you have a copy of any of these papers, the standard, the Daily Nation and the Business Daily, which is what we have with us here on the table, please follow along the headlines and the top stories, but any other paper or from even before today, come on, paper Monday, or from days before, and has something interesting that you'd like us to uh, shout out here on the show. Please let us know. But tuning into the show on X is uh, certified Luo boy watching from uh, Ruiru. Thank you for tuning in to the show. I'm also seeing guys who've been uh, waiting on this segment from yesterday, Ann Odida, who's also uh, part of us here at KUTV. Thank you for uh, waiting along, and it's time for us to, of course, get into it. Emperor Sheka, Jal Rakontua, watching all the way from uh, areas of Kahawa, Romeo 254 as well, and uh, Jori Samoka people who've been waiting on uh, this segment. We're going to be having a discussion here now with Anne Njeri Ndichu, who is a journalist, and we will be taking a look at the most important stories and of course how they will be affecting the business of the country, the business of every single individual. So before I bring her on board, let me go through the headlines real quick, and then we get into the discussion. The standard this morning, is prioritizing this story of KCPE and KC, KCPE and KPSEA. Is it KIPSI, KIPSEA, or KIPSEA? Yeah, let us know if you uh, can uh, let us know the pronunciation. Out goes KCPE, in comes new exams. Whereas learners have been used to cutthroat competition, the new testing format aims to create a less burdensome and more student friendly way of assessing candidates, relieving the pressure of chasing top scores. There's a new, of course, education system, CBC curriculum, which is replacing the old 844. And this is going to be the last KCP examination, which began yesterday and continues in the three days up to Wednesday. And I uh, will be taking a look at that as well. President William Ruto pictured here, engaging candidates during the start of KCPE and KPSEA exams at the Kikuyu Township Primary School in Kiambu County yesterday. That is all the way in uh, Kiambu County in Kikuyu Township Primary where President William Ruto kicked off this examination process, of course accompanied there by Ezekiel Machogu, who is the CS for education. We're getting into that as well. The British monarch survives where many have failed is at the top left corner of the standard and it's there on page six and seven. We'll be having a look at that. Of course, a very auspicious visit by the British royals who are going to have a very busy period uh, this coming few days. Let's go to the Daily Nation. Kenya's top counties, that is the headline there. Kenya's top counties, and it's not in matters of education, but in matters of devolution. A scorecard here on devolved units where they are ranking different counties on how they've been performing for the past 10 years where devolution has been in uh, effect. Devolved units from the Rift Valley dominate the top 10 places in the latest county performance index by InfoTrack with neighbors Wasingishu and Elgeo Marquet taking joint lead. But counties from other parts of the country are also showing their metal in the sector listings is page 10 and page 11 more than 70 percent of respondents are also saying that devolution has made their lives better we've had a discussion about devolution before here on the show maybe we'll be touching on it of course being the headline here on the daily nation let me just borrow here the business daily which i just passed over to Anne to have a look at the headline which is smartphone plant which has now rolled, rose to life amid price standoff. Smartphone plant rose to life amid price standoff. President William Ruto launching the first assembly or smartphone assembly plant in Kenya over in Mavoko at the river in Machakos County. We'll be looking at the headlines, but first, let me introduce Anne. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How are you this morning? I'm fine. I'm yeah. doing very well. All right. Let me give you a chance to do a proper introduction, do justice to yourself, to our audience, then we get to what you have planned here for them. Um, so my name is Anne Jerry Ndichu, and I'm a journalist. I think that's enough. All right. Yeah. You're a journalist. In which areas of journalism do you mostly like to venture into? <laughs> mostly education mm. and um, matters related. All right. Education is among the top stories here today, so it's going to be very relevant for you, of course. Let me maybe ask you, Blank, off the top of your 
your head, yeah? We mm -hmm. have out goes KCP mm -hmm. in in comes new exams, yeah? We have Kenya's top counties and we have smartphone plant which is now here ro roaring to life. I'm having a problem with that R at the end <laughs> there. Uh, smartphone plant roars to life. Which is the best headline? If you were the editor of these newspapers this morning, which one would you say is the best score? We are, we are speaking education, we are speaking scorecard for counties, so this is scoring. Let's score them. Which one is the best? Um, I'd go with uh, the standard. Okay. Out goes KCPE, in comes the new exams. All right. What would yeah. this be your best pick? Because this is interesting, mm -hmm. actually. Um, for uh, culture, let me say a culture that has been going on in Kenya since 1985, mm -hmm. when the first KCP was done, it's coming to an end. This is the last lot. This is the last bunch of students to engage in KCP, mm -hmm. and then comes in the new era of mm -hmm. KPSEA. Mm -hmm. I think this is so interesting because, A, KCP, the burden that was there, let me tell you. It was <laughs> let, <laughs> let's look back at your time. Um, I don't know if you want to reveal how long we can leave that out. Okay. But maybe during your time at KCP, how was that like? Was it, as, as you said, it's, it was very hectic. Um, and the standard is also calling it, uh, it learners have been used to cutthroat competition. How was it like for you? Did you have jitters? How was your experience building up all the way to KCP? Um, let me say it was quite an experience because mm. actually I was the, um, among the first lot of um, CS Matiangi. Mm. So you know the pressure, the pressure, mm. the pressure, mm -hmm. new exams, um, um, schedules, mm -hmm. new ways of testing. Mm -hmm. that, that really put a lot of pressure on students and you know how the society expects you to perform. You know, mm -hmm. you need to get 350 and above, so 450. Mm -hmm. It's quite a lot for the students and for the kids. But I feel like for the CAPSA exams, mm -hmm. um, they're very much friendly to the mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. to the learners. Because right. I think it constitutes to 40% mm -hmm. of the normal grading. You see, like for KCP, mm -hmm. you've studied for like 11 years right. since pre, um, pre unit. Pre unit, those are the classes, mm -hmm. all the way up to standard eight mm -hmm. for you to be tested three days. Three days. Yani, all your life you've been mm -hmm. studying for three days. Just for three days. For and three this days. is going to determine the rest of, of your life. Yeah, because even if you used to pass in their previous exams, if you fail in your KCP, I it mean, won't it won't point. matter at that right. point. But for the for this competency uh, based curriculum, um sixty percent of your of your continuous assessment tests that you used to do in grade four, five and six, mm -hmm. those are the determinants. Mm -hmm. The CAPSA exam is only contributing to forty percent. So I feel that is much better and it's um uh, friendly to the students and they, they won't have to struggle, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And um they will get much exposed to the to the, um, to the world. All right. Yeah. It's going to be less pressure for, you know, chasing tops because I also remember during my time, it's either you had above 400 to make it to a national school yes. or above 350. During my time, there were provincial schools as well. So mm -hmm. there was a, a very uh, segmented sort of assessment in terms of marks. Only what you score during those three days yeah, is what exactly. is going to determine where you go. And of course, knowing that, you know, after that is KCSE as well, yeah. which is also going to determine your next step. You study for all those years yeah. to only be assessed less than 10 hours if you put cumulatively exactly. all the number of hours you sit down for mm -hmm. your exam, right? So whereas, whereas learners have been used to cathode competition, there's this new testing format under CBC, which is going to create less burdensome and more student-friendly way of assessing candidates. In page four and five, which is what the standard is prioritizing, calling it an end of an era, an era with an ERA, but Maybe an error with an E double R O R <laughs> there. <laughs> Probably yeah, makes who's, sense. Who's to say? 1.2 million candidates are sitting for KPSEA, while 1.42 million are sitting for the last KCP exams. Looking at those numbers, maybe something now I would ask. Moving away from you know, of course now we have uh, a new CBC system which mm -hmm. we could delve much more into on uh, its whole structure, the whole framework. But at least on assessment, we could agree that that less pressure is there, of course. Yes. But looking at the numbers, do we have enough? Do you, do you feel like we have enough uh, secondary school facilities to take in 1.2 million KPSEA and 1.4, 1.42 million who are sitting KCPE? That's a huge number, right? Yeah, that's a huge number. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
of course the continuing students the last year's bunch mm -hmm. and ever and i can see there there's progress mm -hmm. in terms of building schools and classes for the incoming ones mm -hmm. so i think with time uh, if uh, proper funding is done mm -hmm. Um, the transition will be much easier and uh, smoother with time. All right. Yeah, it's all about the funding and the management. Mm -hmm. Now, fears, if you're speaking about funding as well, the uh, CS Machogu uh, putting away fears that, uh, you know, there was speculations there will be an increase in school fees for education of secondary schools. However, just to put it out clearly out there, Ezekiel Machogu says it will be the same as last year, 54,000 Kenyan shillings for national schools, 45,000 for county school per annum, which is the amount that uh, in 2024 parents can expect to uh, pay for their students who are going to be joining Form 1. However, in terms of you know, taking a look at uh, that figure, it's not a small amount. 54,000 is not a small amount, it's even not even, a small a, amount. even as is funding and the cost of living for parents. Will it, will it be... And, and I know earlier on you hinted, of course, in the university funding model challenges that we'll be getting into a bit later. Do you think parents can uh, continue, of course, supporting their students in these tough times in regards to education? Um, I think right now education is getting more and more expensive with time. Mm. And um, it's such, a, and it's my fear that we'll go back to the era where education was a rare commodity. Mm -hmm. I think during Kibaki's time, that's when I feel like, okay, during, that's where I found education. Mm -hmm. I feel like... Um, Free education at the time as well, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I found education was affordable. Mm -hmm. And um, right now, as things are going by, I feel like it's going to be much more hectic to mm -hmm. parents. Mm -hmm. And people will have to drop out of schools or go to, you know, maybe you scored 400 and above, but mm -hmm. since your parents can't afford uh, for you to go to Alliance or a uh, national school, you'll just have to settle for what is there. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the increment in fee, mm -hmm. it's it's not fair. Right. It's not fair. It wouldn't be fair to any of these parents. And we've seen uh, even university uh, students saying that they will be orchestrating a strike in case you know the funding that they're expecting from the government doesn't receive uh, or doesn't arrive early. Yes. Uh, um, then who, who? I think we should be having uh, a few of this. If we see that in the university level, maybe uh, someone should take care of primary school kids as well. <laughs> I don't think class eight students will go on strike yes. if they didn't get enough funding. But mm -hmm. you know, it's time for us to also lobby for funding to be pushed towards uh, these schools or this uh, lower tier of education. Heavy rains are also expected in various parts of the country mm -hmm. as these exams are kicking off. Insecurity cases um, over in the north region, of course, police officers who've been ambushed by what it seems to be Al Shabaab attacks. We're seeing here in page four of the standard that some students are being airlifted uh, in places where there are expected cases of insecurity mm -hmm. or flooding. So we're seeing various challenges which are not related even to funding or education. education yeah. Right. What, what do you make of this kind of situations? Education is very, very much delicate. Mm -hmm. Like, you no, know, for example, people are, uh, have, have been killed. There's mm -hmm. some police officers being killed um, mm -hmm. out there during this um, edu this um, KCP period. Mm -hmm. um, insecurity is a major problem in some areas, mm -hmm. and it's such a pity that the government still can't. Um, uh, equip mm -hmm. uh, the, those areas properly to enhance a smooth mm -hmm. um, time for these students because it will affect even the performance mm -hmm. of the students. Right. You know, you're sitting in class, but you're just, you know, you're just in fear. Anything can happen at any time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think this is a part that should be checked on. Right. As they always do during... Uh political campaigns. I think if ballot papers can get to the most insecure <laughs> corner of the republic, it should be easy for education as well. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Prioritizing matters of education. Read about the heavy rains, which are expected in some parts of the region. Um, over 2.6 million candidates are sitting exams in total, KPSEA and KCPE. And these are sitting even as hundreds of those who are not registered heeded CS Machogu's call there. Page 4-5 of the standard is where you get that story. I don't know if the Daily Nation does have uh, matters of KCP and examination. Mm, right. Yeah. At, um, page 2 and page, page two. 3 there. Yeah. All right. So ruling out of fears of uh, increment of fees and also President William Ruto pictured there. 
Um, we're seeing here students who are working, as you can see, uh, in between security personnel, going to schools, others being searched as they're sit, uh, they sitting their final examination. Um, anything that you'd like to say to your former primary school at this point? <laughs> My former primary school, oh mm -hmm. yeah, it's Kagema Primary School just here in Riru. Mm -hmm. um, big shout out and um, thank you for making me the person I am right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Wishing them all the best in their sure. KCP and KP. S E A D is it Kipsa Kipsi Kipsea? Kipsea, yeah. Kipsea. You're saying Kipsea? Kipsea. She's saying Kipsea. <laughs> if you're out there, tell us if it's Kipsea or Kipsi. But also all the best to again once more. Sameta Boys Boarding Primary School for the Anyway, Sameta Boys Boarding <laughs> Primary School all the way in Sameta of Kisi County. I'm wishing them all the best in their KCPE. They don't have any KPSEA candidates, but I know they have KCP who are sitting the examinations. They haven't yet broken my record. I almost forgot that. So they had to break my mm -hmm. KCP record from all the way a decade plus ago. So challenge them. I break. This is on national TV. You can find me. There'll be a prize. There'll be prize money for you there to begin your secondary school life. Back to the Daily Nation then, um, and if you can take a look at the counties here. Okay. Where are you County? Yes. Right. Kuna scorecard hapa ya InfoTrack. They are giving the top 10 places in the latest county performance index mm -hmm. by InfoTrack. The best performing counties, let's begin with even with education. Jutunongea mambo ya education. The best performing in education is West Pokot. Would you, let me, let me, let me read. Uh, this list and, okay. and, and hear your expectations. Uh, West Pokot, top three is West Pokot, Elgeo, Marakwet, Muranga. Will you think these are the best performing counties in education? Uh, Where is your county here? It's not no even in the, to be found. <laughs> not even in, not top even in the top ten, right? <laughs> Kiambu County no. is not anywhere in the top ten in terms of performance in education. West Pokot is at the top, Elgeo, Marakwet, uh, and Muranga. What were your, uh, th there's not even Nairobi, the, the county, the, the county. The capital. The capital. The capital of the nation. Of the republic. Wow. So devolved units are being ranked here across various uh, sectors. Agriculture as well was in Gishu at the top. Elgeo, Elgeo Marakwet second, Transo here. When it comes to roads, Nyeri, Elgeo Marakwet, West Pokot. Culture and sports, Elgeo Marakwet, Homa Bay, West Pokot. Rift Valley region is topping all the counties in terms of uh, uh, the scorecard here. And top 25 counties overall is was in Gershu County at the top. Second is Elgeo Marquette, Transoia County there are three. So let me look for my county there, um, which doesn't seem to be featuring anywhere. Which one? Uh, <laughs> Kisi County is yeah. number 15 there. Kiambu County Aiko Badu. Aiko. Top 15. Wow. What is happening with uh, your county? Okay, <laughs> let's get serious, my people, because what? <laughs> right. Uh -uh. Yeah, so it's education, agriculture, roads, culture and sport and an overall ranking here. What do you think is making the counties in the Rift Valley to dominate the top 10 places? Your best guess or educated guess? Um, I think it all trickles down back to the leaders. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, um, uh, for example, in... Um, in um, Nairobi and maybe say, let me say Kambu, mm -hmm. we delve so much into unnecessary things like mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. Of course, politics and business go hand in hand, mm -hmm. but still, um, I think if much more concentration can go to you governance, know, right? yeah, governance mm -hmm. it will do a much greater job than just delving into other issues that are of no importance. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are of importance, but mm -hmm. not as much. Right. Page 9, 10, and 11 is where you can get more on this story. Uh, in the Daily Nation, where they have ranked Wasim Gishu and Elgeo Marakwit as the top counties. And uh, this ranking, of course, is coming across various sectors, from education, as I said, to agriculture, to sports. I would expect agriculture, of course, being the backbone of the republic. The Rift Valley will come out on top, because uh -huh. agriculture is where you know, mostly happens in the Rift Valley region. It's our breadbasket. Yeah. Yeah. We have the tea factories there. We have maize plantations. We have wheat farms over there. So, um, expectedly, but education, roads. I thought uh, the central region had the best roads. Um, yeah. I'm also in shock. Right. Even Nairobi. Right. Nairobi counties features uh, features Number. nowhere. Yeah. Wow. Even in the top mm. 20 counties, mm -hmm. Nairobi county, Nairobi county, nowhere to be seen there. So let's pull up our socks across the county. More than 70% of respondents are saying that devolution has made their lives better. I'm going to ask you here now for our own small survey. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that moving on from, you know, moving from 
us having a national government which is to take care of every single citizen, now having counties where functions are devolved, education is brought near to you, health is now brought near to you, do you think it has made our lives better? Or do we have counties that don't even understand what they're doing and therefore <laughs> you're part of the 30% who say it doesn't make our lives better? Um, where do you lie? It's 50-50. Okay. Okay, or 70-30. Mm -hmm. um, I feel the devolved government, um, has it has done a lot. Mm -hmm. For example, in the health uh, industry uh, mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. um, more hospitals have been built and um, they've been upgraded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, but, but um corruption mm -hmm. corruption has now become um, devolved as well yes in, devolved in, 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 in as well because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I can't even remember the last time i saw my mc or i, I don't even know him mm -hmm. i mean i just feel this is it's uh, it's just a business mm -hmm. going on in the country mm -hmm. it's just a business going on in the country right I, I feel like some sectors mm -hmm. could have just remained under the national government, just like education is under the national government. Mm -hmm. um, some sectors like health mm -hmm. could have just remained there, because mm -hmm. now um, workers, uh, uh, their salaries are, are being delayed, you just right. find um, people striking, doctors are striking, and you know, we don't joke with things like health. Right. Other things we can just, you know, they can just be under devolved government, but I feel like upon, uh, it's upon the county governments to you know, up their game mm -hmm. in terms of um, uh, handling their finances. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I hear two things there from you and which maybe I do actually agree on, which is one, the restructuring of what functions should be devolved yeah. and what should remain in the, gov in the, in the, in the national government. Mm -hmm. Some sensitive functions like security and health definitely could remain in the national government. government. And then, you know, a few of others which can be devolved like uh, uh, agriculture, as yeah, it is sure. as, as, at the moment, and a few others which uh, could be well handled by the county governments and also pulling up of socks uh, by the county okay, governments yeah, yeah. Uh, my MCA I am sure resides in the national uh, or in the in the county uh, I mean in the capital city of the <laughs> of the government yeah. or, while anafakuwa kuna ofisi na ofisi kabisa right yeah. Kenya's top counties, read for yourself, page 9, 10, and 11. 70% of respondents in Kenya told InfoTrack that devolution has made their lives better. Has it made your life better? Please do let us know on our social platforms. And any other story there that you've seen that would like us to highlight? And um, hmm. Of course, the visit, uh, as, we, as we take a look at uh, a story that you uh, like to bring up, the visit by King Charles and uh, Queen Camilla, the first one, since Queen Elizabeth in 1983, so that is 40 years since the mother of King Charles was here, and that is 60 years since independence. It is page four and five of the Daily Nation. It's going to be a busy few days for the British royals who are going to be, uh, who are in the country, going to be in Nairobi for two days, including a visit to a few other museums, and then heading out to the coast to visit Mombasa Mosque, meet, meet Muslim leaders, meet tech entrepreneurs, meet a few of uh, businessmen in the Republic and also have discussions around environmental issues, but also painful issues from Kenya's past in the colonial era. What do you expect of the King's visit? Um, or do, did you anticipate anything? Was it in your radar? Let me, honestly, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, as a common monanchi, mm -hmm. it doesn't affect me either mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. They come, they live. Mm -hmm. The cost of living is still the same. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. But um, it's good uh, for the for the nation mm -hmm. at large, uh, mm -hmm. for the interactions and the connections that uh, they will make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You're saying as an individual. As an it individual. Is, it is not something you're excited about. Okay. Uh, but as an at a nation uh, at a nation at, at large, you think it's, it's going to be beneficial. Yeah, it's going to be beneficial. Right. Some of the painful uh, issues that I'm going to revisit here, uh, people need an apology. Yes. In what ways, or do you, first of all, do you think we require an apology? And in what ways do you think that should be? Yeah, I think we do require an apology mm -hmm. and not just by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I think financial uh, compensation will be, will do much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a way we can measure how much? Do you think how much money? How much money do you think that would be? Yeah. <laughs> a very huge sum. F figuring figuring the number of years that you know British colonial rule um, happened in the Republic, 1952 to 1960. There was a state of emergency for all those years. 
tens of thousands of Kenyans were killed, yeah. uh, mostly of the Kikuyu origin. So reparations will even begin within the central region, which is bordering Nairobi County. Yes, right? it should. Right. So reparations saying not just word of mouth, but also financial compensation. I'm hoping that will be a discussion between President William Ruto and uh, the King. However, they are saying that we should be excited. We are going to see a couple of uh, activities happening within the CBD. Governor Sakaja is uh, warning that there is going to be minor disruption of traffic flow in the Nairobi CBD. There's also you will be seeing matatus from uh, the British Embassy, uh, or is it the British High Commission? British yeah, High the British High Commission. Uh, they've painted some graffiti there to be in uh, style of my Nairobi's Matatu culture. So you'll see a couple of those painted in the flags of Britain, but also in a couple of uh, Kenyan-made graffiti. The British monarch survives where many have failed. At the moment, I'll let you know, Anne, imagine, at the moment, there are Commonwealth countries, more than a dozen of them yeah. recognize the king as the head of state. What do you feel about that? Years after independence, years after many countries have gained their independence, there are a couple of countries, including Jamaica and a few others in the Caribbean region, which recognize King Charles as the head of state. Ukoloni Mamboleo, amu unawonaji. Ukoloni Mamboleo. Right. Night anytime soon. Because mm. it starts even from here within. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's get to the business daily, which is going to be our last uh, paper to have a look at. Smartphone plant rolls to life amid price standoff, and also at the bottom there, cheap loans dry up as Hustler fund budget cut to five billion. Up there is the Hustler launching the, the Hustler in chief launching a new assembly, a <laughs> Lafu Palachini Hustler fund, fund in a reduce you right. into though. half. Yeah, these are two mm. very ironical stories. Let's begin with a more positive one. I'm going to see the cut of the Hustler fund. Turns it to Hustler. Turns on a Hustler fund. Yeah. We reduce Hustler fund. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Hustler. What should what should you make of a Hustler government which is reducing the Hustler fund uh, from 10 billion to 5 billion now? Uh, to me, it's actually not making sense because mm. this reduction of uh, the five billion, mm. to five billion, uh, it's coming after this uh, supplementary budget was uh, was passed. Mm. And the so it's supplementary not a budget, mm. Mm -hmm. honestly, so we talk as a hapa. Well, like okay, to see but I don't know where we can But this um, supplementary budget to me, it's actually not making sense at all. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, looking at the figures, even in other sectors, like uh, for example, the deputy president and the spouse. Mm -hmm. hey, have you seen the figures? Hundreds of millions. Yeah, hundreds, hundreds of millions. Right. Like for the powers of the deputy president, over 500 million. For, yes, and now it's all the way to 700 and, and something. Exactly, from million. 200. Right. right. <laughs> That's a huge amount. That's a huge to give amount. To the office of the spouse of the but deputy president. president. Yes, right. and even actually the deputy president is actually getting more than the president right now. Right. Yeah, if I'm not wrong. Right. So we are seeing um, an increase in the supplementary budget, budget and we're seeing a decrease. In the Hustler Fund, two activities happening at the same at time. At the same time. But uh, you know, you can find uh, those figures for yourself. Something else that is happening is that this amount of money has been reduced since the campaign. So President William Ruto, during the campaign, promised that it's going to be 20 billion. Mm -hmm. on, oh on yeah, Hustler Fund, yes, right? yes, yes. Got reduced to 10 billion. To 10 billion. Now no. we're at five, by hey. five billion. Yeah, it's just one year. By next year, it's about 2.5. Actually, it's not one year. Right. Here we are 10 billion to 5 billion. Right. It's happening in the same, same year. Right. Same financial year. So this is uh, a worrying trend there. And the budget cut came at the time where uh, Deputy President uh, D Dr. Ruto and Deputy President uh, Rigadi Gashago launched new product lines, including the Hustler Fund for groups. They yeah. moved from Hustler Fund for individuals to Hustler Fund from oh. groups. We're at a time where budgets are getting tighter. The cost of living is going up but the loan facility from the government, which many of us are not excited about, but you know, at least it was there, uh, is now being cut. So times are going to get tougher. Tougher definitely. and tougher, yeah. Right. On a more positive note, top story in the business daily, uh -huh. smartphone plant, which is now uh, here in Kenya. So we have a smartphone plant, which is an assembly plant. I have to make it uh, very, very clear that it's not a manufacturing plant, it's an assembly plant, which is located in Athi River. It's a partnership between uh, East Africa Device Assembly Kenya Limited, Safaricom, the Government of Kenya, and other shareholders or stakeholders within the uh, telco industry. They are saying, or the government promised, that these are going to be cheap. 
or cheaper priced smartphones yeah. uh, as compared to those we are importing. However, a sport check here is showing that that's not true. For example, the Neon Ultra, which is one of those smartphones which were launched, is going for 8999 The Neon Smarter is going for 7499 Are these cheap prices, Anne? Let me say, um, according to the mode of payment, mm -hmm. we can say it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. According to the mode of payment, because um, there's the Lipam Dogum Dogo uh, initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think they, they've said the deposit is like a thousand bob. With a thousand bob, you can get a phone. Okay. Yeah, and. Um, and then you pay deposits daily after, yes? Yeah, in All installments. Right. That's and, where Safaricom um, comes in, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. and also, um, seeing, looking at the figures from Safaricom, mm -hmm. they said um, uh, uh, during the repayment period, um, the Neon Ultra, you're able to get uh, uh, 120 MBs mm -hmm. in five minutes mm -hmm. daily. I don't know how true that is, but um, you can just go and check on the Safaricom page mm -hmm. and you'll see that. And for the new ones, matter, you get 100 uh, MBs in mm -hmm. uh, five minutes daily right. during that uh, period where you'll, you'll be paying, you'll be repaying oh, you'll the be money. Paying dogo dogo. Yes. All right, so that's a a bit in incentivized, which is good for uh, the larger Kenya, but still a bit expensive, expensive right? Oh, yeah, Considering, expensive. you know, I'm, I'm sure you can get a, a Chinese imports. And the Business Daily has done actually a good job here to highlight a few of those smartphones, which you can get at uh, prices which are way cheaper than that, uh, 7000 and 8000 However, of course, there's that Lipa Nam Dogum Dogo upfront fee of 1000 by Safaricom, and then you pay the rest of it. Is this, this, uh, is this a good move for our industries? Yeah, I can is, say uh, it's a good move. Mm -hmm. It's a good move. Right. Promoting our local industries and, of course, assembling right here uh, yeah. from the Republic. And is there a story I have failed to highlight from yes. these papers? On uh, the standard, okay. page two. Standard page two. Yeah. All right. What's going on in standard page two, Anne? Um, the corporal punishment that goes on in uh, schools. Right. Kenya's school flogging. The BBC, I, BBC Africa I did uh, an uncovering of a worrying increase in the number of severe cases that are being reported. It's coming at a very apt time now that we are having the national examinations yes. happening, right? Yeah. Yeah, and we know the primary schools is where it's notorious. Corporal punishment is notorious. Let me ask you maybe before you get into this story here. And um, did you experience corporal punishment in your time growing up? <laughs> <laughs> of course, yes, uh -huh. I did. But it wasn't to that extent where you you're getting hurt and everything. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's there. It can't lack. Right. Considering that um, I even actually went to a public school later in life, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was still there. Yes. I was, I, was, I was beaten a good one um, <laughs> as well in my primary school days. Actually, the biggest worry as a child um, growing up in Kenya, I think at least a few years back, it's nitapigwa lini and nitapigwa na nani. Yani, every time you're just waiting, it's going to happen. It's an inevitable yeah. occurrence. Na nitapigwa wapi. Yeah, na nitapigwa wapi, wapi as well. Yes. Nazambua class 5, nyote toka nje, tunyeche mm -hmm. mikono, right? Mm -hmm. And it's all punishments. There's a discussion whether this is good for discipline or not. What do you think? Of course, even in the Bible, spare the rod, spoil the child, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I feel like punishment should, um, it should be done, it's actually done for correction, mm -hmm. not uh, as a, you know... Um, to inflict pain. To inflict pain, mm -hmm. no. I think it should be done on um, correction with love, you know. Mm -hmm. you, uh, for students, for kids, when you leave your home at your mother's place, you go to the school and your parents are the teachers. Mm -hmm. So the teachers should also treat their children as their, as their right. kids. Right. Yeah, so when you two ways, you know, you beat them to death or something. Because I can see um, a story here where mm -hmm. there's a lady, a girl, mm -hmm. who was punished to death. Wow. To death. That's worrying. Just because um, of the hairstyle. Abby was Abby, Abby Noel, Abby Noel Samuels, Samuels was yes. beaten because of her hairstyle and she was beaten to death. Yes. I also think they're up there, uh, they're, they're showing the back of this young man, man called Caleb, Caleb Mwangi. Beaten and leaving him with scars on his backs and his legs. He was put into an induced coma and spent 11 days in ICU. 
corporal punishment in schools has a long history dating back to the colonial era. When our parents are beating us, or when our teachers are beating us, they're saying that's exactly what they were done to, and that's what brought them to become important members of society. Onasema, wale wenzao wenye wako pigwa, they ended up becoming vagabonds and useless people in society. We no. wouldn't agree with them on that. Kuna kupigwa for correction, na kuna kupigwa ya chuki sasa. Yeah. What is this? Why do you even kill someone just because of a, uh, of a simple hairstyle? So you just send her home. Right. Or just, you know, another mm -hmm. form of punishment. And it's such a shame that the school called the mom mm -hmm. uh, and then told her that the, lady, the girl died in her sleep. Wow. Yeah, they had to lie. But now the, the witnesses now told the true story. Right. That's page two. Yeah, that's page Kenya's two. Kenya's school floggings. The children were suffering from a hidden right. epidemic. I have to be honest, there's, there's this one teacher who whipped me up a good one. And um, I still hold a bit of grudge. <laughs> yeah. So maybe it isn't even good in the long term. This is something that a child yeah. can carry for a long time. Trauma. Right? This is trauma um, that can grow up and grow up in other aspects of their life. Then what would you say to a teacher? Mwana anasema huu ni kichwa ngumu. Hakuna vile. Haizi sikia kama hajapi. Huu ni kiboko tu inaweza mweka kwa line. What do you do with that? With the way their kids work <laughs> evil, yeah. I know for a fact. Because um, my mom is a, is, a, is a teacher. Okay. You know, she tells us all these things. But... Just do the correction with love. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, beat someone to to a point of death. Why mm -hmm. do that? Mm -hmm. When well, you can just make simple corrections. Right. Yeah. Of course, kamani kumchapa. You just do the beating, but do it with love. Right. Yeah. Do it with love. Do it with love. So that's the message out there to the teachers who are uh, currently conducting national examinations. Please do it with love. Don't beat up the kids. There are more ways. But you can also watch that documentary for yourself, uh, BBC Africa Eye, if you type on YouTube and get to see the Kenya's school floggings. They're saying it's a hidden epidemic that many of our children are going through with in these schools. Before we wrap up, mm -hmm. uh, those have been the important stories, of course, that we could take a look at across the dailies, the Standard, the Business Daily, and the Daily Nation. You can read for yourself much more happening, the Financial Standard, Dukondani. I knew that the Health Nation, uh, the, the nation was supposed to be having a health pullout section this day, mm -hmm. and uh, they were highlighting the young people who are innovating around artificial intelligence to improve health in the country. I can't see it, but my friend, uh, Amukasa, who also watches the show, is supposed to be highlighted there. Um, I can't see it at the moment, but watch out for that piece as well. The Financial Standard gives you a story of uh, business around the Republic and also in the counties. I just realized I was taking a look at the Standard while I was looking for <laughs> a story on the Daily Nation. So here, innovators who are using AI. Healthy Nation. The future is here. At the middle of the daily nation, you will get a new dawn. This here. The future is here. At the middle of the daily nation. A friend of mine here called Ian um, uh, Avin Amukasa, who's innovating around sexual reproductive health with, her, with his own venture called SophieBot. It's an AI chatbot that is fed with verified information on sexuality and sexual reproductive health. So you can check it out, SophieBot. And they've shown here a couple of those, those young people who are using technology and AI to innovate in matters of health and coming up with health solutions. So read with them a very good highlight of uh, what young people are using, the tools they're using to reshape this health industry. As we've said there, some of these sensitive uh, sectors should be left with the national government and not devolved, but we can devolve them as the youth with our own solutions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, that's right. Any other thing that we have maybe left out before we wrap it up? Um, I don't see. Right. Those are the important stories of the day. Get yourself a copy and let us know what you think of the headlines. We're going to finish it up here with uh, the last word uh, on the business daily. But before we get to the last word, I have a surprise for you here. Um, it's going to be a game. Okay. So we're going to play a very short uh, general knowledge game uh, between me and you. Uh, yeah, we have two pens here. So the, the, the questions are going to come up on, on the screens in a bit. It's a brain teaser. You know, you're But let's get your uh, last remark there. 
and then we will read you will read for us here just a last remark anything that you have to say and then read us the quote there at the back of the business day um the last word right beware of overconcern for money or position or glory someday you will you will meet a man who cares for none of these things then you will know how poor you are let's get it again beware of overconcern for money or position or glory some someday you will meet a man who cares for none of these things then you will know how poor you are all right you will meet a man who doesn't care about money or position and then you will know how poor you are who's that who said that <laughs> who said that we're all about mis- money and business here yeah, in the ad. all right that's at the back of the business daily also before we get to the game on sports i have to say manchester united was thrashed a good one over the weekend in a manchester derby by manchester city and that happened as south africa also won the world rugby finals so the newest or the latest uh, champions of the world rag- rugby world cup are south africa and you can see the memorable moments which are painted there at the back of uh, the standard on the sports section one more is messi one is eighth ballon d'or to put him as the best player in the world in the past one year so he has the eight ballon d'ors which is an award given to the best player in football and it's a vote by journalists all over the world who are covering sport makes him the greatest of all time undisputed if you have anything to say please let me know uh let's get to the game now and and see if you can beat me i always say to the people i participate in this game with i'm the reigning champion of this game overall i've beat almost everyone mm-hmm. yeah okay show on a leakage ah everyone keeps saying that they blame when i kill them to say my evil we should see the leakage in a leakage i am being ambushed just as you are so let's see if you become the first one to beat me let's begin question number one if you're at home also let us know what you get here one shilling is equal to how many cents 100 oh okay let me let me give the instructions before we oh, go good. on with this game this being a national examination day i think Mr. how what was examine instructions hey. all right so we have five seconds in every question we have 10 seconds sorry in every question you have 10 seconds it's a countdown of 10 seconds so you answer you write down your answer there oh. you should you shouldn't let me know and then we'll mark against each other right mm-hmm. and also we'll mark for the people at home so one shilling is equal to how many cents <laughs> let's go okay <laughs> all right question number two what are the two types of taxes all right man okay um question number three see me copy by the way <laughs> question number three who regulates companies in kenya hey, the government of course <laughs> <laughs> oh man um the leading export in kenya what is the leading export in kenya oh man Oh man. Kenyans. <laughs> Apparently by the president it's going to be Kenyans in the next few years. Who was the Ke- who was Kenya's first prime minister? We bad. Okay. Um hmm. what I can't see this uh, let's 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 get it again please. What is the motto for Kenya police? What is the motto for Kenya Police? The National Police Service. Hope you did kijana. It's not that one. <laughs> All right, next question, what does SGR stand for? Eh? Okay. Um Who is the CS for foreign affairs in Kenya? Oh man, only got shuffled, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Hmm. All right. Next question, who is the governor of Meru County? Oh man. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> oh. Is that Meru or Embu? 
Meru. Meru. Ana in the hint. Ana in the na spouse. Uh, who is the KRA Commissioner General? Oh man. I I can shuffle the question. <laughs> no, we cannot. <laughs> KRA Commissioner General. I missed a commissioner general. All right, so that's the end of the questions. Let's swap, let's swap, let's swap, let's swap. Later, later, one of you. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, pens down. Okay, okay. Thumbs okay. up, thumbs up. Next up is Insha. Okay. Yes, The beginning uh, question was uh, one shilling is equal to how many cents? 100 cents? All right, 100 cents. Okay, question number two. What are the two types of taxes? Okay, there's income tax. And then direct and indirect tax. Oh. Yeah. So, what are you going to do? I'm going to do it. 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 I'm going to Three. Who regulates companies in Kenya? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Capital Markets Authority. Mm -hmm. The Capital Markets Authority. CMA, Kenya. Oh man, all right. Um, question number four. The leading export in Kenya, agriculture. So, she wrote milk and coffee. And you wrote, I wrote tea. tea. Who was Kenya's first prime minister? Is it Oginga Odinga? Is it Jomo Kenyatta? It's Jomo Kenyatta. He became prime minister before he became president. Really? Yeah. But you used to be taught it's Oginga Odinga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scrap. Yeah, but was CBC on as a Twitter Gen Z? Okay. Question number six. What is the motto for the Kenya Police, the National Police Service? Utumishi kwa wote. Yeah. All right. I wapi ID kijana. That's the, <laughs> the slogan. <laughs> um, what does the SGR stand for? Standard Gauge Railway. Mm -hmm. All right. And then next question. Who is the CS for Foreign Affairs? Alfred Mutua. Yeah. Wrong. Uh. Wrong. Who is the CS Foreign Affairs? <laughs> <laughs> Musalia Mudavadi. Oh, oh. man. P.S. Mudavadi ali 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 P P Prime CS. Yes, yes. Prime CS and Foreign Affairs. Oh, that is Musalia Mudavadi. Oh, yeah, aliongezeo ingine. Yeah, aliongezeo ingine. Hey. Imagine. Can you imagine that? Mutu aneza ongezeo. Kepe wa mtu ingine. Sindiyo, kama mimi hivi. <laughs> President William Ruto. Um, who is the governor Meru County? Kawira Mwangaza? but twice impeached, right? Mm -hmm. Not yet ratified by the Senate. So, Shambaja Senate wa mwe, but incumbent, outgoing, and currently threatened governor of Meru County is Kawira Mwangaza. Question number 10, who is the KRA, Commissioner General? Humphrey, oh man. Humphrey, Humphrey Katanga. Oh yeah, Katanga. He said he will be taking a look at Humphrey. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That is the Commissioner General of KRA, Humphrey Watanga. Humphrey oh, Watanga. Watanga. Humphrey Watanga. Alisa Watanga, your social media channels for any of your postings. If you're having a good time, Nini Nini, KRA will have a look at eh. your social media pages. Okay. Yeah. So politics so talk. Post. Ah, mm -mm. So you October dump. Eh. You, uh, October. Eh. 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 So, so you got. Um, you got WhatsApp. <laughs> oh, who like WhatsApp status? Okay, what do, you, what do I have there? What do I have there? What do I have there? Because you have five. You have six. I have six. Like in your yeah, see me, see me, see me. Can you get put here? You are going to go That's what we like. Hapana, hapana. What was it? Be Gen Z. I beat you there. Six out of ten, five out, out of ten. ten. What up? I got seven last week, so this is a drop for me. I'm not so proud. <laughs> Uh, the least improved in this class. Thank you very much for engaging in this discussion and also the newspaper review with me. Yeah, um, I'm glad I had a good time here and uh, yeah, hope All to be back again. All right. Any last shout outs that you'd like to give or uh, any last words that you have? This is your chance. 
anything that you'd like to say about yourself or anything that you pursue in journalism, this will be the time. Um, my last, uh, my last words um, goes to the um, education CS or whoever is in charge of education. Hey, kindly fund universities. People are going through hell. Yeah, and um, special shout outs to um, Anne Odida. She's a journalist here. And um, Basement Till I Die, TOK. Thanks. All right, Bisha Tuesday takes a break. I'll be back with the feedback that you guys have been giving us so far. Alafu, get your pilau ready, get your ugali skuma ready. You're having a, a conversation on avocado. Is it avocado? Is it avocado? Let us know. We'll be right back.